Poppy here from the Museum of Sonoma County. I am a teaching artist with their Art for Kids program. Uh, today I am in my studio here in Petaluma, California, and we are going to be making our very own version of an abstract flower. We're going to be focusing on line and shape and color today. Uh, we are focusing on the artwork of an artist team down in Melbourne, Australia, and uh, they are fabulous at abstracting and simplifying everyday objects that uh, we see out in nature or in our homes and making them interesting and vibrant and very modern. So um, today we are going to start off with drawing our abstract flower and then we are going to move on to the second part of the lesson which is painting. So guys I wanted to talk about what abstract art is really quickly before we uh, dive into our project. Um, abstract art is um, artwork that is connected to something in in nature or something that is real um, but it isn't exactly recognizable as being realistic, as being exactly what we see. So for example, we have this abstracted flower. Well, how do we know that this is a flower, right? How do we know that it's abstracted? How do we know that this isn't a flower that we find in nature? Basically, we can tell that it's a flower because our brain recognizes, oh, I've seen something like that before. I've seen something with petals. I've seen something with leaves. I've seen something with a stem like that. Now, have I seen a flower that looks like this? No, a flower with black leaves and white stripes on it, or, you know, just one single dot and in the middle of a red, petal, one red petal, and one dot on a yellow petal, all in the same flower. I mean, maybe you have, I don't know, I haven't, but it's really fun to play with our imagination and come up with something like this. So abstract art, it's connected to something that's real, but it isn't exactly recognizable as being that exact thing that we see. So. This isn't, you know, the exact photographic image of a protea flower. That's what this abstracted image is. It's of a protea flower. But it is, it is a representation. It's, it's definitely inspired by that flower. And then the artist takes lots of liberty with color and looser forms and shapes in making it. Okay, so for our drawing today, all we need is a piece of paper. It can be craft paper, construction paper, printer paper, uh, recycled paper, whatever you've got on hand. We're gonna need a pencil and we're gonna need an eraser. That's all we need for our drawing. If we want to uh, fill it in after we're done, my lesson is gonna be with paint. And so we're gonna need uh, white paint, blue paint, red paint, yellow paint, and black paint. And we will need a water bucket. We will need some brushes, a variety of sizes. If you've got a couple of small brushes, that would be fantastic because we're gonna be going in for some small detail work. Uh, but if you don't have paint and you still wanna do this lesson, you can uh, use colored pencils, markers, crayons, oil pastels, watercolors, you name it. I just wanna show you a couple of examples. This is what it uh, could look like um, with paint, with just good old acrylic or tempera paint. Um, I had my kids help me out. This is with marker, if you prefer. This is with colored pencil. It's a little bit lighter here because the paper isn't white. Um, but you can imagine if it was on white paper, it would be popping out a little bit more. And then um, after you draw it, you can also just go in with designs. If there's any Zentangle art fans out there, one of my sons is great with Zentangle and he 
made his flower in that style. So there's lots of different ways if you don't have paint at home to still do this project. All right, let's get into drawing. When I begin a drawing, I break it down into lines and shapes. I look really closely at the object and rather than getting super overwhelmed about it, ah, I, I need this area to be up here. I, I need this to be this exact size or how on earth am I gonna draw that? I, I just break it into small little chunks in my mind and look for the recognizable shapes and approach my drawing like that. So when I look at this, I see lots of lines and lots of shapes. And, and I wanted to do a quick little practice before we actually get into the um, drawing with what shapes we are gonna be using today. So there's, there's some loose lines, there's some straight lines, but for the most part, it's lots of ovals and circles and sort of feather shapes. You know, it almost looks like an oval, but it's got pointed edges. Half ovals, half circles. We've got rectangles and we've got sort of soft edge squares, almost rounded. That's when I look at these uh, leaves right here. I think, oh, we can use sort of soft edge squares for those. Those are the shapes that we're gonna be using today to build our flower. If you wanna go ahead and practice on a piece of paper, uh, go ahead. All you have to do is press pause on this video at any time and really take your time with practicing I will be right here when you come back. Okay, so like I said, before I begin, I, I look at an object and I look for the shapes. And the first thing I noticed in this drawing was the overall shape of the top part. I sort of broke it into, into three parts, like, the leaves down would be the bottom. These smaller petals are the middle. And these larger uh, petals on the top would be the top part. But behind the pink and black and red petals, there's this sort of uh, white layer. And it's sort of, it's the background of the flower. And I sort of see this as almost like um, a scallop uh, seashell or maybe like a giant paw. One of my sons said it looked like a duck foot. Um, and so that's where I start with this drawing. So I, I make it a little bit loose and curvy and then I come down and make a flat line. Come over here now and make a flat line. And we've got our basic uh, shape that then we can start building everything on from there, okay? And then I can just start filling in with these shapes. Now, I'm just gonna start I can, I can approach this by wanting to really follow the artwork of the artist and try to copy or imitate, or I can approach it by saying, all right, I already know some of the shapes that are used in this, and I'm gonna go for it and just do my own thing. Both are completely okay. Sometimes uh, artists need to imitate and copy other artists in order, in order to learn. But sometimes, in order to learn, you have to forge your own path. 
So it's totally okay whichever approach you wanna to take today. I'm probably gonna go somewhere in the middle. Um, I'll use the drawing as a guide, but um, I always sort of end up doing a little bit of my own thing. That's just how I feel comfortable. So I'm gonna start filling in uh, this sort of, uh, I really see it as a, as a shell. I, I'm gonna fill in the shell shape, okay? And I'm gonna start with, with some ovals. Now, you guys are using a pen, I'm sorry, a pencil, and so you can erase your marks. I am using this permanent pen only so that you can see better. Um, so um, I, if I make mistakes, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. I'm not gonna worry about it. We're gonna cover it all up with paint anyway, okay? So um, again, at any point you feel like I'm going too fast, all you have to do is press pause on this video and take your time. And when you're caught up or when you feel like you wanna join back in, just press play and I'm, I'm here, okay? So let's see, I'm gonna keep going with some ovals and more ovals. I am starting with the top layer first. Uh, that, I, I like working top down myself. Um, I'm gonna add one going up a bit. I'm gonna add this sort of half feather. I'm gonna add another with a pointy bit. Add a soft uh, petal there. Add another petal over here. Okay, now I'm gonna start working on the middle layer. I'm gonna start filling in more of what I see. Again, you guys have a pencil. So uh, before you paint or draw or color in, you can always um, erase the lines that are sure to start jumbling and mixing in together. That's up to you. Or you can just leave them and paint on top or color on top. It's all gonna look good, no matter what. All right, I'm moving into my middle layer, adding more petals. Okay. Add some more funky, uh, sort of feather-like shapes. And lots of ovals and more of these. I'm gonna add another one over here. Makes it look a little bit more balanced. Um, and then I've got sort of all of this filled in. I'm gonna start working on my leaves. Now I'm going to work on my middle leaf first. And that is really, it's like, it's almost like a half circle or just like a really rounded square. And up here, it's like a rounded rectangle. Over here too. And if yours aren't round, that's okay. That's not a big deal. And it looks like they had some fun putting some colored petals down here. And then one of my sons noticed that the stem is not in the center. It's off over to the side. That's up to you. If you wanna put your stem over to the side, you can, or if you wanna put it in the center, up to you. And it's kind of a rounded rectangle. Okay, so we've got our, our drawing. We've got the structure for our painting or our drawing that we're gonna do. And our next step is gonna be building our palette to begin painting. All right, guys, so let's get into mixing our palette for our painting. So I mentioned in the beginning that we only need blue, yellow, red, black, and white. We're using primary colors, 
red, blue, and yellow. And from there, we are gonna mix our entire palette up today. So um, a little bit about colors. Um, a true color, like red, yellow, and blue, are called hues. And when you add white to any of these colors, all of a sudden that changes and it's called a tint. So for example, uh, if you were to mix white and red together, that makes pink. And the color pink is a tint. It's red and white combined. And when you add the color black to something, just a little bit goes a very long way, it becomes a shade. So when you add white to a color, it lightens it and it becomes a tint. And when you add a little bit of black to a color, it darkens it and becomes a shade. Now, the painting that we are working on today has lots of soft pinks in it and oranges and peaches and light greens and blues. And we are going to mix all of those up ourselves today. So I'm going to teach you. Again, anytime you think I'm going too fast, all you have to do is press pause on the video and you can um, mix your colors at your own speed. Okay? Don't, uh, you don't need to feel rushed or overwhelmed. You can take this at your own pace in your own time. So, um, I am going to uh, mix up some oranges. There's lots of orange. And when I'm mixing colors, I try to pull from the outside of my little pile of, of paint so that I don't sort of contaminate all of that color. I've already got some red in there. But how do we make orange? Yellow and red. All of a sudden we got a, an orange here. I've got water right here. I dip my brush in. I add a little bit of water to that to make it a little bit more creamy. If I'm looking at it and I think, ooh, I need a little bit more white, I'll put a little white over here and simply make a lighter orange right there. If I think, ooh, I like a darker orange than that. All I have to do is come over, pull a little bit of orange. I'm sorry, a little bit of red and mix that towards it. That's looking really red. Maybe a little bit more, more yellow. Anyway, you can just play around with adding darker and lighter. Again, you can add a teensy bit of black to make a tint even darker for a more burnt orange if you want. One color that is predominant in today's palette is this, this sort of in-between orange and in-between pink. I call that peach. And we can build that with some red, some white. Let's make a pink. And then I'm going to clean my brush over here. Maybe you can see, I've just got a bucket of water. And I'm gonna pull some of this orange and add it over here. And now I've got this pinky, peachy color. Okay. If we want it a little bit uh, peachier, all we have to do is add yellow to it. And basically the colors that I'm using to make this peach are red, white, and yellow. Okay. Another color that's in here that we're gonna wanna use is green. How do we get green out of these? Blue and yellow. 
we get green. If we want a brighter green, all we do is add more yellow. And we can keep just playing around and playing around until we get that shade that we like. I sort of like a brighter, lighter green myself. And adding just a little bit of water, even if it's our, our dirty water, it just uh, makes a little bit more paint and it also waters the paint down a bit, makes it creamier, makes it easier to use. There's some light blue in our painting too. I'm gonna grab some blue here, use my little spoon, bring some white over there. And I'm gonna make a light blue. And then um, as I'm painting, and if as I will run out of these colors, all I have to do is just keep mixing while I'm painting. I can already tell I'm gonna run out of the pink because there's a lot of pink in here. I'm just gonna make myself a big old pile of pink. And I can lighten it with white or add more red to it if I want it darker or add orange to it if I want it peachier. Okay. Now, there's also another color in here that, um, a couple of colors. I want to enhance our yellow. So I'm going to make a, a darker yellow. I'm gonna do that by borrowing a little bit of this orange. And now there's sort of this golden color. And I don't mind that a little bit of uh, orange that you may see in there. I'm gonna mix that together. And then I'm also gonna make a light, light yellow. I'm gonna need some white for that. Bring some more white. Well, now I've got a really light yellow. I wanted that light yellow on the top row of our flower. So we've got several colors now to work with. And throughout our painting, we're going to be probably making more pink and more orange and more peach and more. But I've taught you how to do it by taking a little bit of your hue and adding white or adding a different hue to it and you just blend, blend, blend with your brush. Keep working. You can add a little bit of water to help loosen it up, mix it up. And I clean my brush a lot in between colors. Or you can use a variety of brushes if you don't feel like cleaning all the time. All right, guys, the fun part. Now it's time to dive into our drawing with our paint. Um, I know I keep saying this on this video, but I can't stress it enough. If I'm going too fast, all you have to do is pause and you can work at your own pace, okay? I know that I uh, tend to paint kind of quickly. Uh, my kids let me know that when we were working on this project together. So I am aware of that, but I want you to know that you can press pause and, um, and take your time and join me when you're ready, okay? There's no, no time pressure. So, um, one thing I'm gonna do, um, I am going to, if you notice, um, there's always a few leaves of the same color. So let's say um, I'm gonna be working in this sort of uh, orangey red. Well, then I look around and I'm like, well, where else is it? And so, while I have that color paint on my brush, I'm going to I'm going to use that um, while I while I'm working with that on my brush. Okay, so I'm mixing up. We've already mixed up some orangey reds. I'm I'm adding water to mine and making making it sort of a bit watery. I'm watering it down a bit, um, and I'm going to start just diving in. 
This is uh, my uh, sixth grade son's flower. Uh, this is the actual print. And um, so I'm gonna be looking up at both of these while I'm working. All right, so I'm noticing some of the reds. Oh, also, if you guys wanted to, you could have um, drawn your circles in. I wait until everything is dry and then I go on with my circles on top of the petals. That's, that's how I work, but it's up to you if you wanna draw your circle in and then paint around it. It, it all works. Okay. I'm just gonna start diving in and painting. Alrighty. Here we go. Now, the paint is going to dry while we're working. And um, so anything that I think, ugh, I, I made a mistake, or it's going into a different area, or whatnot, um, when I'm painting, I can go in once this is dry with a different color and just paint over that, and then it's no big deal. I, I love paint for that reason. It's so much, it's a very forgiving uh, medium. All you have to do is wait for it to dry and paint over it. I'm using a pretty big brush, um, and if you wanna be using smaller brushes for more detail work, uh, I, I think that's probably a really good idea. Um, I am using a big brush just basically so that I can um, get lots of paint on um, to show you guys better. I'm working on a bigger flower. So I've got some reds. Now I'm gonna go in with some pink. I see some sort of uh, cotton candy pink. One of my favorite colors to paint with. Um, that looks like fun. I've got one that looks like a half feather over here. And I paint outside the lines all the time. And I am not concerned about that. I'm, that is not worrying me at all. And I see another one right here. It might be hard to find um, your shapes if you haven't erased some of your lines, but I'm just sort of intuitively thinking, hmm, here we go. Follow some lines. And now I'm going to add a little bit of orange to my pink. I'm gonna work on that peachy color now. Sort of light pink, peachy. Really like that color. There's something on my brush. There we go. Alrighty. Where else do I see that? See it over here. Um, one thing I do recommend is to uh, paint the black areas the very last. Otherwise, it's really up to you. If you if you feel like starting with blue or going in with green, go for it. That's up to you. We all need to approach a piece of artwork the way that we feel most inspired by. But sort of letting that black go on last, it's it. I found um, that way you don't get when you paint next to it, you don't get black um, mixed in with your other colors. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of peach over here, and uh, just I'm just gonna add a little bit down here at the bottom for fun. I am gonna add the dots last at the very end. Now I'm gonna go through with some yellow and add some of that. I love the color yellow. It always cheers me up. Just 
just look for other areas where there's yellow. See some, something on my brush, right in the middle here. Again, guys, if I'm going too fast, all you have to do is put me on pause and go at your own pace. Um, I'm just going to have some fun and add yellow over here. I really like um, a balance and harmony in colors. So I like it when, um, for example, with this yellow, it's like, if it is almost in a triangle, I've got some sort of down here, then I've got some yellow up here, then I've got yellow over here. It bounces around and it makes the viewer's eyes go around in a circle. I like adding colors in threes. And I noticed that this artist, these artists do too. It's kind of a little artist trick, helps the viewer's eyes just keep moving, keeps interest. I'm going to make a really pale yellow. So I brought over white next to my yellow and I added just a little bit of yellow to it. And I'm gonna use that along the edges of, of the flower. Now, now I really should be changing brushes. Just going to do the very tippy tops. And then I'm going to go in with some blue. on my own right now, just for fun. And you can add colors the way that is pleasing to you as well. I'm gonna make a little bit of a darker blue while I'm working. Work down here, add that. A little bit, get that starting to dry. And let's see, mm, is this dry? Yeah, it's pretty dry. I think I'll add a little bit of blue. There's this fun little shape up here. We're just taking our time, filling things in. I'm gonna make a really, really pale pink now. All I'm doing is adding white to our pink that we already have. And I'm gonna go in, look around where there's really pale pinks. Okay. And I'm gonna add half, half pale pink over here. Some of these petals are half and half colors. Yeah. Okay. Just bounce over to the other side. And anything that if I want to make that a straighter line when it dries, I can go in with my red and just paint over that. Hmm. Maybe add some pale pink over here. So 
There we go. And really just play around. Uh, sort of, let's see, maybe I'll add a little bit more pink over here. I added some extra leaves. I'm sorry, petals. Just for fun. I'm gonna go in with some light green now. Add a little bit of yellow to that green that we made and see how that, see how that goes. Add a little bit down here. I like sort of adding a little bit of color down at the bottom. It almost sort of makes a bouquet look that I like. Uh, so I'll add a little green here, add a little bit of green with this yellow, add a little bit of green over here. I like building colors on top of colors if, if it's not too wet. So my colors have dried a lot because I add quite a lot of water and thin my colors down almost like watercolor, so they dry pretty quickly. Um, and I've got this guy, I've got this, I've got this guy, and all of these that I'm gonna do black. So I think I'm gonna start filling that in. Well, actually I've got, I see that yellow spot down there that I can fill in. but it's really up to you how you want to approach filling in your flower. And once it's all dry, you can go back in and make the color stronger or, you know, really, you know, build more layers. So I think it's really, fun to imagine these black petals. And I love the contrast that they make with the light pinks and peaches and yellows here. There we go. All right. Yep, painting takes time and it takes patience. And that's sort of the fun part about it. You really just get into a meditation, you get into your own world, you get into the flow and it's such a nice, peaceful, relaxing feeling. And then all of a sudden your painting is done and you, you don't even know where the time has gone. It's so peaceful and relaxing. Okay. Hope you guys can see. You don't just see the back of my head this whole time. Almost, almost done with our first layers here. I can see areas where I can just go in and sort of make, uh, I'm just gonna almost make dots and sort of fill in the paper with color. And 
that that's up to you though if you like leaving blank areas inside your flower that's up to you and once uh, we wait for it to dry it has to dry completely then we're going to go in and we're going to um, if you have a white pen you can draw a white gel pen you can draw the white or we can use a thin brush and paint on top but that um, black paint needs to have dried a hundred percent I definitely recommend waiting for about 10 minutes before you do that at least and same with our our circles I want everything completely dry before I add in there um, I'm going to I see some areas that I want to uh, add a little bit more color to. I need to clean my brush, get all that black paint off. And I'm going to add a bit more yellow to this. Make those colors bolder. Um, I can make a golden yellow too, right here. There's a little orange, that's fine too. And I'm gonna add, oops, how quickly the colors blend with that black. Maybe go in with some reds. Right here, I'm just gonna fill up, uh, fill up like that. And you can see that it's starting to come together. We're starting to make our, our protea flower. And at this point, um, I can see that some of my colors are dry and I can start adding, adding the uh, white paint or the pink paint or whatever colors I want to add. I'm going to start building my circles. So I changed brushes. Let's see how this one goes. This is a little bit smaller. And I'm just going around and making a, a circle shape. Sometimes you can just Press your uh, brush in the middle and then twirl it around in a circle shape and it'll make a circle for you. All depends how big your brush, the bristles are and how big of a circle you want. Uh, let's see, this area is dried too. I'm gonna go in with a white circle just for fun. but my black paint is not dry, so I'm not going to mess around with that at all. You can practice with a half circle, or if you wanna do a full circle, you can, or three-fourths of a circle, up to you. Let's see, any other white? Well, I'm gonna go in with a dark pink over here. Okay, let's see. Starting to, starting to feel pretty fun over here. I'm going to add um, almost like a red. Add a little bit of orange to that. And this guy. Yeah. All right, so you guys may be able to hear people in my family in the background. Uh, we've got four of us all together, sheltering in place, uh, school, work, studio, everything. And so our house is a little bit loud. So you may be able to hear my family members. I bet your family members are all making noise too, right? We are all learning how to uh, share the house and share the noise together. All right, let's see. 
The black is still not ready. Uh, so what I recommend is stepping away from your work. If you are finding, I can't do anything, everything is wet, step away from it and uh, just take 10, 15 minutes and then come back and add more layers or add your white or add your circles. I'm gonna take a quick break though and let this dry and then I'll come back. Hey guys, okay, let's finish up. So my painting has dried and I'm ready to go in now and basically do some touch up work and the white lines on my leaves and, uh, and get this, this flower finished up. It's pretty exciting time. Okay. Uh, I want to get a thin brush for the white paint uh, down on the petals. I'm sorry, on the leaves. I keep mixing those up. I don't have a lot of thin brushes. Uh, this is as good as I've got. I've got some white paint on it. As you can see, I just took my fingers and tried to sort of make a, a thin tip out of it. Let's see, let's go for it. I don't know. I'm going to just make a line like that. Looking good so far. And then I am just making some slightly curved lines that go all the way to the edge. So, um, Add a little bit of water to try to um, try to smooth out the paint. Here we go, and we got one side done. You can see how it really uh, makes the the leaves really pop. And it looks really dynamic. Um, on a different leaf, I'm gonna get out my white um, ballpoint pen and show you uh, what that looks like. So it's really it, what you've got on hand, what you may wanna do, how you wanna approach this. And you can keep going over the lines if you want. Let's see, here's a, um, it's just a, called a jelly, a jelly roll, a gel roll white pen. And let's see, do I have any umph in this? Let's see. So here we go. And we've got a thin white line. And I'm just going to, it's, it's really satisfying. I will not lie because it's easy, it's thin and it looks really cool but i think that white paint looks really cool too so it's really just what you've got i wanted you to show i wanted to show you guys the different possibilities with it um i mean when you're up close you can really see it i'm noticing on the video that it's actually quite hard to see and um maybe i'll just have the middle one be really thick and then the sides be thin. And we just do curvy lines for the leaves going out. Okay. Um, I want to um, I want to add um, a pink uh, a pink dot, and I want to touch up one of my red, uh, one of my red leaves or petals over here too, like that. Touch up over there a little bit, make that smaller. And then I wanna add a pink dot to one of my black petals over here. And uh, again, you can just sort of twirl your brush to get that circle. And um, then we can also just sort of dab in any areas where there's still white. 
dab in some color if you want. And you can also um, add half colors if you want or uh, make the colors darker. It's completely up to you at this stage. Now that your flower is completely dry, um, you can add more multiple layers or even design work into it. Um, one interesting idea I just had, thinking about the Zen Tangle that my son did, it's like, you can even go on top with black pen or a white jelly pen and add tons of design with the color going on in the background, sort of blend the two worlds together. That could be really cool. Um, but anyway, this was our modern abstract flower and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I had a lot of fun um, learning about this lesson and playing around with colors. Uh, I was thinking it could be fun if you guys really like yours, um, you could make more. Um, you could even gift it out. Mother's Day is coming up in just a few weeks. You could make a little secret one and give it to your mom if you want or your grandma or your caretaker for um, Mother's Day. It's just a little token of thanks. Just an idea. Um, I hope you guys had a great time and I appreciate that you um, stuck it out and stayed with me for this lesson and I will see you guys next time. Take care.